Hello everyone, Jose of your Fishkeeping. This video should be an interesting one for me. Uh, this is a question from Green Machine Sweden. Uh, the channel owner is Magnus. He asked a question on one of the videos that I did regarding cleaning the diffusers for the CO2. He says, doesn't, with all that amount of bubbling that I have in the tank air, he said he helps eliminate CO2 that is pumped into the tank just as fast as it goes in. And I said, well, that's a kind of an interesting question. So we're going to just explore that a little bit more. Magnus uh, from uh, Sweden, he said that running CO2 and running bubbles at the same time helps eliminate or dissipate the CO2 that you actually put in. I have a spray bar at the top and I also I like to add additional aeration. My tanks are all overstocked and that's one of the main reasons why I like to do it. Several gas laws which I will be putting on the screen that governs how gases dissolve and react in a liquid environment. Uh, for example, the CO2 that we use in our aquariums is the same gas CO2 that is used when you open and you get that fish that's actually CO2 escaping. One of the laws that uh, discusses how uh, you can maintain CO2 dissolving liquid under pressure. Uh, there are others that deal with temperature pressure and the amount of solutes or or particular matters that are maybe dissolved in it. So you can, if you're interested in those laws, you can certainly look them up and see how each one affects it. So one of the things that I told uh, Magnus is that, yes, I do believe that it probably can, not probably, but I have not really tested it. But it certainly, it will, from a science point of view, will make sense. If you put a little bit of salt in, in a cup, for example, uh, you're gonna have, and you dissolve it, it gets to a point that if you keep adding salt, the capacity to dissolve that salt in the water reaches a maximum and then you cannot dissolve it anymore. Now you can improve that by changing the temperature, by heating it, that will do that, will do that or increasing the volume either way. Or stirring it is also another thing that will help it dissolve, but as long as you don't reach that maximum capacity for the fluid, then it gets to a point where you can no longer do anything. If you're adding CO2 to an aquarium and you add additional bubbling, that's kind of like stirring is gonna help one of the things that people will do where you do have uh, chlorine added to your water source is that they will age the water. One of the things that allows the chlorine to be to dissipate, to dissipate is just that it will bubble itself out of, out of solution. If you are a diver and you come up very quickly, you get the bends or you will actually have bubbles forming on your bloodstream that can cause serious health hazards, if not death. So you have to ascend back to the surface slowly to allow that pressure problem that affects gases uh, to, to avoid that kind of problem. So if you do add air to this, it's a certainly a possibility that you can do this. He made a comment and I tell him that the, the pH in my local source is 7.4. I adjust my CO2 drop counter until I get to the correct green color. You start, the solution starts with the blue then you're going to have the, a certain green color. Once I get to that green color, I sometimes will test it. Once I have my bubble counters adjusted to the right amount of bubbles that I have, probably in my case for the 120, which is sitting to the left of me, the discus tank, I probably have anywhere between 45 to 60 bubbles a minute. That amount has been set for a while once I made the adjustment and sort of dialed it in. And I, get, I can get a pH, if I test that, I use an electronic pH acid and I may check periodically and I get a pH of seven. And my water is at about 7.4, right out of the top. I use a five pound cylinder of CO2 and that usually lasts me for about five to six months. I use the same cylinder with different drop counter for the 120 here. Behind me is a 90 gallon tank, which uh, does not have life plants. They're all artificial plants because of the species of fish that I keep in there. They all, I've tried every plant and they eat all the plant except one cryptochorine. That's the only thing that survives in there. On this side here, I have a 65 gallon, um, primarily tiger barbs, and those are life plants also. So I inject CO2 in that one and there's another 60 gallon over there that I also inject. I keep, I have a lot of Anubias and Tiger Lotus 
and some other additional plants there that they do quite well with the setting of CO2. For some reason, way back, I did have, didn't have the CO2 connected because I was doing some work on the floor and I had it actually out for a few months. The tiger lotus were not doing as well. The, uh, the leaves were very frail. And once I started it, even those plants that they say that do not need CO2, they actually, it's, they do much better with it, even though if it's not required, they do much better. So again, going back to the, to the pH level, uh, I don't chase numbers in general here. I, I use, I know that I have an issue with the 60 gallon tank that is the one is the furthest away from the cylinder, which I keep under the 120 tank here. So what happened one time was that I was not getting bubbles there. I guess it, it took, it takes a while on the line before the pressure builds up over there until I start getting bubbles. So I, I dialed it up a little bit, kind of forgot about it. Then my wife told me, what's going on with this tank? All the fish are floating there, they're acting strange. And I noticed the diffuser, it was like, it was a full blast. So I stopped it. I did a, a, a PA check and it was probably about 5.5, uh, way low. So I did a very fast water change, uh, about 80% of the water, which is what I would typically do. And then the pH kind of returned to normal. And nobody died in the process, but uh, even some old plecos that I had, they were kind of on the side. They were looking all very weird and acting weird. So the pH dropped quite a bit and it happened quite drastic. So one of the things, again, other than I chasing numbers, the only thing that I, as far as the chemical adjustment, is I only added the chlorinator because uh, my area is, is heavily dechlorinated for in New York City. And sometimes you could smell. There are times where if the water is running for a while, I could actually smell the chlorine. So I do add the chlorinator. I like to use safe, just personal choice, not for any involvement with the company. So what happens with this tank uh, with the 60 gallon? Uh, I, I corrected that situation. Once I dial in the CO2 drop counter to get the right level, color level, on the CO2 check, which I'm putting on the screen, I no longer have to do any, any adjustment. I just leave it alone. I just change the tank when it's empty, which usually lasts me for about uh, five to six months to feed the three tanks. It costs about $34 uh, US dollars uh, for six months, which is not bad. So what my thinking is, okay, sure that it does help and it makes uh, science wise, it makes a lot of sense that by bubbling and adding air is going to help dissipate the CO2 a little bit faster. But I've never noticed any change in the pH or I've never noticed in the CO2 checker that there's actually a change. So if it's leaving as fast as it, as it is, the pH remains the same. So there is no, um, no noticeable change. Now do I check what the CO2 level uh, with some other electronic measurement other than the CO2 checker? No, I don't really check. So I don't know. I don't know for sure how much CO2 remains. Now there was one uh, comment that he made, uh, which is uh, kind of interesting. I have to read it out to you because I don't want to misquote him. I told him that my pH was 7.4 out of the top and I the pH is a seven. So he says uh, that he, uh, he calculated the equilibrium of the pH 7.4 to a seven. If no tannins are available, you are running your tank on approximately nine to 12 ppm CO2 which I don't measure how many ppms of CO2 there is. I go by the color change on that and I try to balance it with the pH so that it doesn't go too low. Although they say this is like low, I usually don't make any adjustments again for just the pH as it comes out of the tap and I make no adjustments on it. Now he says, uh, if tannins are present a few ppm less, not sure how much of a difference it makes to increase CO2 five to eight ppm above the natural equilibrium to air makes for the plant. I am aiming for 25 to 30 ppm, which is 21 to 26 ppm above that air equilibrium. Uh, for me, that's actually a lot of information, which I probably have to just explore a little bit more because I don't keep the CO2, certainly not to that level of uh, checking the ppms and so on. And as there is in a lot of physics laws and a lot of things, there's a lot of formula that you can calculate these things out. I don't take it that far. Um, I almost, I'm always willing to learn and whatever one does, as I said, is you do things your way and however uh, works for you. Uh, and uh, he said, you know, that this is a term that we use a lot in YouTube. You do whatever works for you, but he says whatever works for your fish, which is even a, a better term. We do things very different, all of us. And this is certainly, it's a, it's a topic that I probably would explore a little bit more. Uh, I 
the, the balance that I maintain with the CO2 assays with the constant bubbling and one of the things is that if the CO2 uh, dissipates a lot more by increased bubbling which you can see behind me this tank behind me does not have CO2 I think I've already said it because a lot of the species that are in there are heavy into into eating plants so I've tried many plants the only thing was the cryptochorin that did not that they did not touch but I just opted don't like it but I just opted to have silk plastic artificial plants and just to keep a, a, a pleasant looking uh, aquascape I guess if you can call it that so a lot of the times I will other than chasing numbers and checking numbers uh, what I would do is I just look at the results that I get uh, the plants do, are looking pretty amazing overall am I losing CO2 because I'm using too much bubbles you know I would take you know you put things in a balance I rather since my tanks are overstock I rather make sure that they have adequate oxygenation are the plants producing enough oxygen don't know that the oxygen level I don't measure because again I have to see what I'm doing with the results that I'm getting and how the fish are behaving how the plants are behaving so if the plants are looking better every day to me then I will definitely continue doing what I'm doing because it seems to be working but I definitely will explore a little bit more of the science uh, behind CO2 and the plants. Uh, Magnus does a lot of work with terrestrial plants. He says he's an novice on aquatic plants which uh, I think we all when you call yourself a novice you probably know a lot more than you're letting on so this is really uh, interesting information that you're providing to me Magnus and I certainly will like blow that a little bit more and I will be looking further into your channel. Uh, he does keep a beautiful koi pond and most of the time we used to sing koi from above. He actually went to examine the, uh, the koi and went snorkeling and we got an underwater view with, um, with the fish. He has some beauties there that he says there some of them are about 10 year old. So take a look at his channel, it's Green Machine Sweden. Magnus runs the channel. So I thank you Magnus for a very interesting question and something that we all need to explore a little bit more. But again, whatever works for you and your fish, you continue doing that. Another thing that you uh, made a comment also was about that you basically measure the amount of uh, CO2 that you're getting based on, on purling of your plants, which is oxygen production. Uh, sometimes I guess I'm purling, a lot of the times I don't see it, but I'm just looking at the overall health of the plant. And this seems to be uh, keeping some sort of a balance. So some of the things I would certainly need to measure, there are equipment that I can measure the oxygen levels and so on. But I just rather err on the providing more oxygenation for the fish because I, I am overstocked. If I lose a little bit more of the CO2 because it's dissipating a little bit faster, uh, they, the plants are definitely responding to whatever level of CO2 is in there. So I thank you so much. It was really an interesting question and something that I need to explore a little bit more. But uh, thank you again and um, I will be looking through your channel and getting and learning a little bit more from you. Thank you so much, Magna. Summary to a terrific question. Are we losing a lot of CO2 due to excessive bubbling or air movement in the tank? Perhaps we may be. But you have to, there are stuff that we don't measure for, either because it is not worth it, it's additional cost, the hobby is already costly enough, and do we need to buy all, a, a lot of extra additional equipment to check oxygen in level, CO2 level, other than the known level checkers that we use. There's many ways of testing or observing your plants and your fish health. If they're eating well, they have great colors, the plants are active growth and beautiful color and just look healthy overall. And you have to trim and continuous trimming. Pearling is it, it is one indicator, but you don't have to look at the overall picture of your plant and fish's health. And whatever is working for your fish and your plants, you continue doing what you're doing. And some other things, not everything is measurable in the hobby. There's always room to continue learning in the hobby from each other and sharing information and passing it along to newcomers to the hobby. Uh, it is a wonderful pastime and I hope you all can enjoy it as much as I do. Thank you so much.